I get your point, but I think again, we we talked about this a little bit before with with Arnold Schwarzenegger being there, his inability to announce an ER, uh, you know, word without saying ah. Uh, I, I thought it was great. You're wrong, Kirby. All right, my no, least we didn't, favorite. We didn't say that. You said that. I thought it was stupid, but go ahead. Well, I love a rainy night. I love a rainy night. I love to hear the thunder. Watch the lightning that lights up the sky. And that's how we start off episode number 188 of the Promo Upfront podcast. A little Eddie Rabbit for you. Uh, I am one of your hosts, Bill Petrie, with me as always. Let's call him the Baron of the Big Game. We can't legally say what that big game was because we don't want to be sued by Roger Goodell and all the people of the National Football League. But let's do call him the Baron of the Big Game, the one and only Kirby Hassaman. Hassaman, Hassaman. I do know him. I know his last name. (laughs) Also know how to pronounce it. Uh, But anyway, the Baron of the Big Game, Kirby Hassaman. Kirby, how the guacamole are you? Yeah, I'm doing well, man. Doing well. Just trying to, uh, you know, this time of year, keep the plates spinning and and keep things rocking and rolling. But, I, you know, your uh, serenade was actually quite lovely. That was a really nice Eddie Rabbit rendition. Nice job on that. So I'm doing well, buddy. How about you? I'm doing great. Not driving my life away, just uh, enjoying a little rainy night here. Mm-hmm. Uh, doing well. Uh, both of us are resplendent in our royal blue, different, slightly different shades, but uh, yeah. our branded merch, which actually uh, makes some sense since yeah. that's the industry we're in. Yeah, and, and you we'll know, talk about. Uh, we will, and and he, you know, it's it's uh, the football season's over. Super Bowl is is done. It's been played. We know who won. And it means kind of the end, of, the beginning of the uh, the beginning of the year is kind of over. Now we're kind of in twenty twenty four, right? Yeah. yeah right. Don't try to follow my logic, there, people. <laughs> I can barely do it myself. But roll with me here. But that got me to thinking, Kirby. Okay, right. you know. We're we're still kind of in the beginning of the year. I always sure. think February fifteenth is that the first forty five days is the beginning of the year, and then after that, man, it's it's full go. Okay. But you know what the best part of the new year is? I'm guessing you don't. I, in fact, that was a rhetorical question. Don't even answer, Kirby, because um, all I'm going to do, according to the script I have I've written out, is tell you you're wrong anyway. So just let's assume you're wrong. Feels right. uh, my favorite thing about the beginning of the year is seeing all the fantastic new merchandise from suppliers in our space, the branded merchandise industry. And man, boy, oh boy, do we have some fabulous ones from our good pals at Logo Mats. We all know they have a wide range of indoor, outdoor, and point of purchase mats that are mats that are bold, bright, durable, and made in the USA. However, I bet you weren't aware of these three new products, Kirby. Okay. That would be the Desk Impressions Mat. It's a stunningly mm. gorgeous chair mat for use on hard floors. Make your, your chair glide on a mm, beautiful nice. logo mat. The Pop Scrape Mat. That's perfect for fundraising, product promotions, and events. And my personal favorite, the Branded Comfort Mat. It has amazing anti-fatigue uh, properties. I think you would pronounce it fatigu, but it's actually pronounced fatigue, anti-fatigue okay, properties. Now, Kirby, I know you're as pumped as I am about seeing these fabulous new products alongside their already impressive lineup of merchandise. I am. And and I think that you know one of the best things about when people introduce new products is it does reintroduce you to the rest of the line as well, because it's like, um, you know, when you start talking about the mat that goes underneath the chair, I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. So I, I love that, that it kind of reintroduces me to a line that I already know is super powerful. Kirby, I couldn't have said it any better myself, according to the script I wrote. As a reminder, Logo Mats is celebrating their 20th anniversary here in 2024. So let's help them celebrate by stopping over to LogomatsLLC.com to see all their products or Better yet, why don't you just contact Miles Wadsworth or anyone on the team at Logomats and place an order? That's really what we're trying to do here. Place an order, people. Love it. You don't think about a mat, logo mats as a great upsell for your clients. It is. And I'm telling you, that team is going to help you out with that. They'll help you, as their new tagline says, stand out where others fit in. All right, Kirby. So we uh, do something, we have a, it's a little bit of a tradition here on the Promo Upfront podcast as I trip over my words for the sixth time in the first three minutes, and that is to talk about the Super Bowl ads. But before we get into that, kind of an extension of that, I wanted to talk about 
the Super Bowl, the commercials, which we're going to take a deeper dive into, but the branded merchandise that goes alongside it. Now, okay. we you you brought up last week something I was completely unaware of in mm -hmm. the Miller Lite promotion where they really leveraged merchandise uh, by by uh, the first, I believe, a thousand people mm -hmm. got uh, a jersey with a specific QR code on it tied to that person and they could win a year of free beer. I didn't know about it. But our friend David Schultz sure knew about it because he got shirt number 99, if I believe, or jersey number 99. That's and so I'm cool. going to put him, I'm putting him on the cover of our podcast uh, today, this week. I love because it. Honestly, he posted about it during the Super Bowl, during the lead up. Um, and I saw it and I'm like, okay, I had FOMO. I wanted that jersey. I don't know where I would wear that. I would look <laughs> ridiculous wearing that, but I wanted it. And I, to your point, kind of a continuation of our conversation last week, I thought it was a great use of merchandise. Do you have anything to say about that? And then I have something else about merchandise before we get in the, uh, yeah. the uh, Super Bowl commercial review. Yeah, yeah. So I first of all, yes, FOMO, four days. And and again, yeah. I think I told you, I actually tried to to get on fast enough, you and did. I, wasn't, I wasn't fast enough. I didn't get it. I didn't even know what it was going to be. I was just like, yes, I want whatever it is. And And so, and then the other piece is, and this is the part I want to give kudos to David is like, he took it and like ran with it. Cause the, you know, all Miller Lite really, it. yeah, really asked you to do was put it on during the game. And so there's a QR code on each piece so that it would, you could scan in and, and again, brilliant by Miller Lite, but yeah. David took it to the next level, created a video around it. And again, one of the things I always say, David hates it when I say this, but I think he's the Renaissance man of our industry. He's, sure. he's like good at so many different things. And when I, I saw this, I was like, dude, that is yeah. brilliant. And kudos to David. But I mean, what Miller Lite, Miller Lite did was engage people like that who are passionate about the brand and, and let them tell their story for them. I thought it was yeah. awesome. Well, and, you know, you said that uh, uh, David was faster on the draw than you. And that's probably in the only area of life where David's faster on the draw <laughs> than you. But that's OK. That's not what I'm talking about. We talked in the past on this podcast about the trend of micro influencers. Yeah. And this is an absolute perfect case in point. Brilliant. Whether they picked you, because I think you sell yourself a little short, you do tremendous videos and tremendous content. But, you know, I don't know if Miller Lite actually did research, if they had micro, I mean, it wouldn't surprise me. But picking someone like a David Schultz or a Kirby Hossman was a brilliant idea because they're going to do exactly what you want them to do, which is promote your brand in their sphere of influence, whatever that sphere might be for the duration of the game. I thought it was great. I agree with you. Uh, David awesome. did a great job and is absolutely a, a Renaissance man. Now the other commercial that I saw, mm -hmm. and I'm not going to put this in my review, even though it was one of the better commercials, I'd actually put it in the top three, but since we're about to talk about it, I'm not going to put it. Okay. The Duncan uh, commercial. Mm -hmm. They, uh, if you remember that with uh, Ben Affleck, uh, Tom Brady, and uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Matt Damon. Matt Damon, that's him. J -Lo. Anyway, I thought that was a, yeah. J <laughs> who's that? Uh, anyway, I thought that was a great commercial, but I don't know if you know this. Duncan actually sold the track suits that they wore, the ridiculous track suits, mm. sold out in 90, I'm sorry, 19 minutes. And again, another merchandise tie-in. Now, if you remember that commercial, these are gaudy, loud, obnoxious yeah. track suits uh, that nobody should ever wear, but yet they created something people want them. No one's ever going to wear it except to a, a costume party, a Halloween party, something like that. I love it. But a gr again, another merchandise tie-in. And I think what I'm seeing, Kirby, over the last X amount of years, pick your timeline, is really merchandise starting to drive the advertisers yeah 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 as opposed to trail the advertisers and wanted to get your take on the a would you would you wear a duncan sweatsuit or b uh you know do you agree that uh, merch is really starting to push uh these brands to to be a little more creative i think that okay so uh, i'll answer the first thing is so probably not but i did i didn't want it so i didn't go get it but the miller light merch i would yeah. Because I, I, you know, I, I, I have an affinity for that brand and I was all in. Right. And so I would totally wear that Jersey that I would be wearing that on the podcast today. If I had that, you know what I mean? Like, so right. it, it has to do right. with an affinity for the brand. I think the people who got it are, who are Duncan fans. Awesome. Right. Um, but right. the second part, which is, is merch driving it. I said, yeah, I, I think, yeah, we are starting to see that. And I love that 
advertisers, marketers are starting to see, yes, there's the se there's the yeah. 7 million bucks. There's the 30 seconds that you have, right? but there's so much more opportunity mm -hmm. to then utilize that with, you know, unpaid media on the front end, uh, you know, virality on the back end, and then adding some lasting power to it by tying into brand and merge. I, it, it, I, yeah. Those are my favorite campaigns. You know what I mean? Those are my And like campaigns. I said, yeah, I, mine too. And by, and like I said, driving out of that grassroots level, I'm going to pay more attention to what you do, what a, what a David Schultz does, yeah. what what my, my uh, friendship group is doing more than I am a commercial on the TV. And so yeah. I thought it was brilliant. Uh, oh, I don't I think I really grasped, I don't think I grasped the brilliance of it last week. Yeah. Um, so it, it was, it was pretty amazing. All right, Kirby, before we go into the Super Bowl ads, Hey, I know you love homemade, I'm sorry, uh, sublimated home accessories. I know you do. Sure. Uh, well, our good pals over at the Kanata group have a wide variety of home goods that are just ready to be sublimated. Talking right. aprons, oven mitts, pillows, hot pad holders, and on and on and on. I could go on and on, but that's not what we're going to do. I just want people to realize with each product, you have the ability to decorate with that edge-to-edge -edge vibrant sublimation. You can even use photos of, of a pet or a specific product or whatever you want to do. It's amazing. Head over to the canadagroup.com today. See all of those amazing home accessories that are just ready to be sublimated in vibrant color. All right, Kirby, why don't you lead us with some Super Bowl ads? I think we we okay. we have kind of this is this a little one time we actually do some planning for the show. So yeah. Well, again, I think what we talked about was doing, you know, our favorite ads, then maybe mm -hmm. the ads we like the least. You want to go, maybe we go one by one, right? Sounds um, great. Sounds okay. Great. So I'll go with my first one. And, and these are in no particular order. They're just literally what I thought of. And then I yeah. went back and did research because I, I thought, okay, the ones that I liked and I remembered, well, that's the point of the yeah. exercise, right? So Absolutely. my very first one was the Dun Kings ad. The Dun Kings ad with Ben and Matt and Tom and J Lo. I thought yeah. it was it was like cringy from my perspective in the best way, yeah. mainly because I in Ben and J Lo, I'm like, oh yeah, that's yeah. how Amy looks at me when I have all these crazy ass ideas. And so I certainly right. saw that. And I thought Tom Brady was was funny in that, but my favorite is actually the 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 interactions between Ben and and Matt when Damon, when yeah. yeah when Matt's like you make it very hard to be your friend. <laughs> yeah and so yeah. that was actually my favorite I thought it tied to the brand it was memorable and then honestly to your point that we just talked about. I love yeah. the behind the scenes, the extra footage. Yeah. Like if you go to YouTube, there's other, oh, yeah. you know, not just the commercial, but all the other stuff. And again, it adds to the longevity of the campaign. So that was my favorite. Yeah, that was your all time. That was your number one Yeah, that one was my favorite, number one. Right? Yeah, yeah. My number one favorite, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. I thought that was absolutely brilliant. You know, Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, for that State Farm ad. First of all, Arnold has leaned into his accent, I mean, he, he's, he can't really change that accent. And so the fact that he has a sense of humor about it, I thought was brilliant. I thought it was great. It was very memorable. Uh, I, so that was actually my favorite ad was the, the stay farm mule. And it was just the interplay of neighbor, neighbor, neighbor. It was very funny to me. Okay. All right, cool. All right. It's, 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 so, on, it's on, it's on my list later. Okay. So I, my, my second favorite one okay. was the Dove commercial. Uh, I think they call it Hard Knocks. And it was the body image of mm -hmm. women athletes and how many um, girls who are yeah, developing to, into young women uh, drop out of sports because of body image issues. And I thought, man, what an incredible, A, a the message is is fantastic. Yeah. But B, the timing of that message, a, a very generally male dominated day that is about big heavy men hitting the hell out of each other and, <laughs> and moving a ball up and down a field to focus for that moment on little girls trying hard and maybe having some failures as we all do when we're learning how to do things. And then that stark moment where they put the, the actual uh, graphic up there of the people, you know, how many, how many, the percentage of, of girls who stop playing sports by the age, I think of 18 because of body image issues, but that, that hit me. And I don't know why, yeah. um, but I thought that was an amazing, amazing advertisement. And I do remember it was for Dove. I, I think it was a really cool mm. ad. So I, yeah. I that was my second favorite one. I'm really glad you brought that up as not anywhere on my list. And as soon as you said it, I remember 
sitting in there going, thinking that that was powerful. Cause I think it wasn't 18. I think it was 14 because I think that like yeah, it's it when, the, when the girl's body start to change, they're like, okay, I'm not yeah. going to do that. And yeah, that was really good. I agree. That was a really good one. Yeah. Uh, my second one, my second one's silly. Um, I love the Kawasaki ad, the Ridge that was the party in the front. It, it, I, I thought yeah. that was funny. Yeah. I thought it, it, it got everybody's attention. Yeah. People were chuckling about it. The fact they had Stone Cold Steve Austin and suddenly had a mullet. Yeah. Like everything about that I thought was funny and it tied to the actual product. So I remember yeah. that. that was one, like, it was the first one of the day that I went, Ooh, that's good. Yeah. So that was, that was my second. That, that was on my list for the third. So I'll just echo what you exactly said. That was my third most favorite one. Again, I thought it was funny. And again, it, again, what I love, and I guess, you know, it's always what we personally love. Yeah. yeah. I love when brands take what is perceived as a weakness yes. and lean into it and turn it into a strength. Kawasaki four wheels. I mean, I think most people's perception is that's redneck rednecky over there on the farm having a couple beers and just going bonkers in a field and they leaned into that with the whole mullet messaging and yeah. i thought that cgi was done very well i love yeah. that stone cold steve austin was on it so that was my third favorite one so what was your favorite one that must be the dunkings one well no dunkings was like our number oh, one you I, that. yeah so i'm gonna go like i had a couple that i was gonna lean into here i think my third was probably the t-mobile with jason momoa and scrubs okay. It's, it, it, they, I, I yeah. thought it was funny. It was, it was not how I expected to see Jason Momoa. That guy has a sense of humor about himself, yeah. which I think is pretty good because the Scrubs guys are good. Um, I will say yeah. my side note on that is there were uh, at least two more flash dance references in Super Bowl commercials than I was expecting this year. I mean, when there's more than one, yeah. like, that was really funny to me. So I, I like that one. It was memorable. Yeah, I would love to comment on that, but I was emptying Jack Daniels out of my body at that point. So I don't recall that commercial at all. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair all enough. right. Okay. Let's talk about the worst. Let's okay. talk about the worst. I'm going to start with my third worst, if that's okay. I'm going to kind love of lead I can up do that. to what I thought was the worst commercial. I thought the third worst commercial, and I'm going to catch some flack for this. I think a lot of people like this one. Okay. It's called Talking with Walken. It's the Christopher oh, yeah. Walken one. Yeah. I thought that was just dumb. Yeah. Um, now, the only way it would have been saved, because some of the people did a great, so people didn't see it, uh, There, as Christopher Walken, who has a very distinct cadence of, about the way he speaks, goes through life, I think a BMW commercial, if I remember, yeah. I barely even remember the commercial, who it was for. Um, he runs into people who are doing Christopher Walken impressions. Yeah, to him. And yeah, yeah to him. And, you know, here's your car, uh, Mr. Walken, that type yeah. of stuff. Yeah. Um, I thought it was dumb and it went on too long. And the only thing I thought they missed out on and would have saved it is you talk about a Renaissance man, Dave Grohl. Now, Dave Grohl famously does a great Christopher Walken <laughs> impression because one time Christopher Walken introduced Foo Fighters on Saturday Night Live saying, ladies and gentlemen, Foo Fighters. Um, <laughs> and I thought that would have been awesome had he run into Dave Grohl, like a, a little more star power there. Yeah. Uh, to me, uh, to tie it in a little bit, I, I, again, it just, it was lost on me. Yeah, fair. I, I, I agree in the sense that that was one that I didn't get. Um, of course they had Usher, I think in that one, but it, uh, yeah, that one, it, it was going in a lot of different places. I didn't love that one. Uh, my third least was Temu, Temu, the, the, the online, uh, shopping platform. Mm -hmm. Uh, yep. you know, they did, they had what I thought was a very annoying jingle, um, and the idea that you're shopping like a billionaire when you're buying a bedspread for nine ninety nine, just it, nothing about that sort of ties together. That being said, I'm not I'm not complaining about the platform. But, you know, I've, I yeah. I know a lot of people have shopped on it, but I, that one was one that I didn't love. Yeah, I, I'll I'll complain about the platform. Um, no, I've never <laughs> bought anything on there. I just you know I feel like it's one of those really weird invasive Chinese apps like TikTok. Yeah. <laughs> you know how I feel about TikTok. I it's I feel like it's data mining and all it is. I think Tanyu does that too. I, I agree with you. That commercial is like, yeah. all right. My second worst commercial that would be Judge Judy uh, for Elf Cosmetics. It was called Judge Beauty. Um, mm. I, I there's been a I literally times don't I've, even remember it. It's yeah, like, oh. there's times there's times I've watched Judge Judy and it's fairly entertaining because she can be very quick and very smart. She's not an actress, and so they <laughs> took the best thing that Judge Judy is, which is spontaneous and quick and and lightning fast. And they completely neutered it. And it was just dumb. It was predictable. 
it uh, it was for some cosmetics com- line. Who 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 cares? It was dumb. <laughs> okay. My my second one, I did not like the state farm ad. I didn't I, I thought they made a whole deal about I didn't like it. I like I was just like, what the hell does this have to do with Aww. anything? You got an option for an action star and they're like interrupting it with his the pronunciation of stuff. I I didn't like it at all. I it, 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 I, I didn't the like the man it. is 75. What do you want him to do? <laughs> Let him do the things that they started to do. I didn't. I, I, I didn't need Jake from State Farm to give him a, a pronunciation lesson. I didn't. Oh, oh, cool. Danny DeVito's in it. I. They, I will say that probably my one thing is there was a lot of wasted, wasted celebrity cameos in Absolutely. a lot of these. I'm just like, oh God, what the hell is it? Anything? There was at least one commercial that I literally cannot remember what it was for. And as a, mm-hmm. the room around in my house around the Super Bowl, yeah. we all went, well, that was a lot of wasted money. What the hell was that? And so I thought that would be probably the the overall arching theme. I I get your point, but I think again we we talked about this a little bit before with with Arnold Schwarzenegger being there, his inability to announce an ER, uh, you know, word without saying ah. Uh, I I thought it was great. You're wrong, Kirby. All right, my mm-hmm. least we did we didn't say that. You said that. I thought it was stupid. But go ahead. Yeah, that's okay. No, <laughs> we we agree. Uh, all right, the worst commercial, the one that that went on too long, and the payoff just wasn't there. It was for Etsy. It was for Thank You France, where uh, the United States gets the Statue of Liberty, and mm, and yeah. everybody in eighteen whatever it is, and everybody's wondering what do we do? How do we thank the people of France? And they come up with a cheese board. I mean, I saw that coming from a mile away, and you know the CGI was bad. It just honestly, it was dumb. D U M with a B dumb like it I, yeah that was one that i didn't get so I, I i got no argument on that one i thought the homes.com whole series of ads was silliness i like yeah. and i like those actors this is not a a shot at them and i i but like to me it was like the opposite they're 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 being intrusive to get their information as opposed like yeah. oh th- I just didn't like anything about that ad. I thought it was annoying. And and I know there were multiples. Every time they came on, I was like, that's yeah. stupid. So I didn't like yeah, it. Yeah, no, I, 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 yeah, I can't argue with that. All right. Now, Kirby, we always do a what the fudge category. Uh, like, <laughs> what the heck did we just see? Right. I know you have one. What is your what the fudge commercial of the day? Yeah, I thought that I, the thing that I think everybody in my, at my kind of Super Bowl attendee, had the same reaction about the Kennedy yeah. ad. Uh, first of all, uh, you know, you don't see a lot of presidential political ads on the Super Bowl. No. So right away it stood out. You can say you could make the argument that's good. I would not. And then he picked yep. a, you know, 1960s JFK ad to impose yeah. them himself over. Like, yeah. so I, I, I hated everything about it. I didn't understand it. And I'm like, yeah. and this is not a political statement. This is just math. If there was ever a time, A, that there was an independent candidate that would be able to stand out, you would do it based on being progressive, young, technologically advanced, not a throwback to 1960s. There's nothing, like messaging was bad. WTF. I didn't understand anything about that. Yeah, I have to agree with you. You know, the second I heard Kennedy, 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 (laughs) Kennedy, Kennedy, I'm like, what, what's going on? Yeah. And I'm like, I had no idea Robert F. Kennedy Jr. was running for president. That was number one. So from that perspective, it was informative. So I am now aware that he's running for president. But again, to take a campaign theme song from 1960, which it it does not age well in terms of sounding, like you said, progressive or or with it, as the kids would say. Uh, No, I I agree. Now, I had two more if you can indulge me, Kirby. I love it. Uh, The Wicked Trailer. Man, mm. I heard so many people talking about how, oh, oh my gosh, the Wicked trailer's awesome. It was nothing but hot garbage, people. That was <laughs> awful. It was absolutely, it went on, it was a minute long, I think, and it seemed like 10 minutes. And it just, the play was fine. I saw the play in Chicago many years ago. It, I'm sure the movie will be just fine. But man, that went on and on and on. And I, I have a theme that, or a, a belief that most movie trailers, in mo- and on the Super Bowl, fail to do anything. Hmm. I think there's too much going on. I, I and this one stood out just because it stunk. Oh man, see that one didn't bother me. I like I thought again. I th- I think part of that is you know maybe who you're watching with and stuff like that. And I'm sitting next to maybe. my daughter, 
and and I thought she thought it was great. And so then it, it I think that colors my opinion. I, I didn't mind that. Sure. The other WTF one was the Mr. T Skechers ad. Oh man, and I agree a hundred percent with that one. Okay, that's a good and one. Not, not because Mr. T was there. He was a little irrelevant. I think a lot of people don't know who he is and all that. And for a guy who's 70, 72, looks great, you know, looks in great shape. Okay. My real what the heck moment was. Why the hell is Tony Romo in there? You are subjecting me, CBS, to already three hours of Tony <laughs> Romo in his very weird chemistry with Jim Nance. I do not, I repeat, do not to see him need, need to see him in some sort of quasi-comfort footwear ad. No more Tony Romo. I'm done with it. What the F? Yeah. Okay. I, I got no problem with that. That was, that was just, I, I, so that one should have made my bad list because it was just a bad ad. Yeah. Like, so you're yeah. just like, oh, it isn't spelled with a T. Yeah. What in the hell are you talking like that? That was a bad ad. Now, something you said just made me think of something else. So I actually yeah. did think the Deadpool ad was good because it, again, I, with okay. the idea, with the idea that it drove me, I was like, oh, it's on YouTube right now. I must go see this. So that was one I thought was pretty good. So that was a good way to do it. Here's the thing. I want to be aware of things like that. Like is the second I was made aware of the Deadpool movie. I'm like, cool. I want to see it. That was it. I don't need 10 minutes of it. Now, right. Deadpool's awesome, so I don't mind 10 minutes of it. Wicked. <laughs> Unawesome, as the kids would say. Okay. I don't think the kids would say that, but all right. <laughs> I, I, I believe I would know. All right, uh, Kirby, do you have another topic for us? Yeah, we can make this one a quick one, um, just because okay. of time. Um, yeah. So one of the things every year um, is the Super Bowl halftime show. People talk about this. Um, leading up to the show and 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 yeah. then during the show, whatever. Um, and as a side note, I was not on social media at all during the Super Bowl. I just I was totally locked in. I'm probably the worst person to watch the Super Bowl with because I really love football and I really want to pay attention to the ads. So I don't want to talk to anybody. I just want to watch. Yeah. Um, right. And the next day, I got on social media and it was like, God, there's a lot of miserable people who don't understand they have a remote control. If they want to change the channel, they can. Yeah. But one of the questions I see is that why are people willing to do, why are these superstars willing to do the halftime show and not yeah. get paid to the point where I think people don't believe they're not being paid. And I saw a post that was broken down. I think it was yesterday on social media that I thought really did a good job. And, you know, the obvious answer is exposure. And so sure. I was curious to know your thoughts on it. And if like, if you were a usher, you were a prince, you were one of these acts that yeah. did not get paid. Would you have agreed to do it? Do you think it's a good trade? Possibly. I, I think it really depends on the individual uh, artist and what, what's going on. I think Usher's promote, he, he's got a new album about to drop, correct? I yeah. Think he, okay. So brilliant. using that as a platform to promote an album seems to be a better use of, of a big show's time as opposed to maybe some sort of female pop star who would use a moment of gratitude at an award ceremony to hijack it. I, I wouldn't know if that ever has happened, but if it did, I would say the way Usher handled it and leveraged the Super Bowl for his purposes. I think that's what it is. You know, you and I speak in the industry and out of the industry. Yeah. And there are many times people will say, we'd love you to speak. We can't afford to pay you, but the exposure you're going to get is amazing. <laughs> and I will tell you the exposure we get never amazing. It's great and it's yeah. nice and it's yeah. wonderful, but it's not going to, if, if anything, I get more out of exposure speaking because my audience to sell my, my products and my services is promotional products, distributors and suppliers. Yeah. Yours is not. So right. I think for someone like Usher or um, Alicia Keys was up there, her, who I think is amazing. Her guitar solo was amazing. Um, I, I think it's a great platform if you want to leverage it for your own purposes. If you're doing it for an ego trip, sure, you can tell. You can yeah. always tell if it's an ego thing. So I think you can take say, okay, yeah, you're going to give me access and exposure. I'm going to leverage that for my own use. Now, the one thing I will say is I love the fact that Usher used that vehicle. And, and I thought the halftime show was great, by the way. Yeah. That is not generally my genre of music. I thought it was phenomenal. I, what a showman. I thought the, the roller skates and the way the camera moved along with it was great. And my favorite part was he was singing live. 
So often you hear the, you know, the NFL will not allow people to do that. My, my understanding is I said, I'm not doing it unless I can sing live. And he, for a 40 year old man who is running around all over the, the floor of the Super Bowl, then getting up on the stage and to be able to sing with that uh, just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful voice, man, that was amazing. That was yeah. truly amazing. And so I think to answer your question in a very long winded way, and I'm sorry, I'm hijacking this. No, it's good. I think I, I think it depends on the artist. You know, I think you have to, I think you can take the gig, but you really have to say, okay, I'm using this for my own purposes here yeah. and, and start being and be very selfish about what do I want to do and how do I want to do it and how yeah. do I want it to be remembered? Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I think, so I think a lot of times when you say, Hey, you're doing this and you're doing it for exposure. I think the people listening to this podcast can totally appreciate this because they'll be like, Hey, can you, uh, sponsor our program in the basketball, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. You'll get a lot of exposure. No, you won't. Right. You won't. No, you won't. The Super Bowl halftime show is different. Mm -hmm. I, I think mm -hmm. it, it, if now you made a great point, it is totally worth it. It's totally worth it. The end yep. from, from period end stop. However, yep. it is incumbent on the person doing it to utilize it to, to leverage Correct. the, and so I think, and, and right. I won't get these details exactly right, but I think Usher dropped his album like a day or two before the Super Bowl. Brilliant. So it's available on yep. Apple and all those places right there so that people can go while yep. they're watching it. And then I think if I understand correctly, um, his, during the show, tickets to his upcoming concert went live during the show. Like that's brilliant. Yep. That is that is what you should be doing 100%. to leverage that opportunity. And so, from my perspective, if we, if you and I, had the opportunity to speak at a ginormous, you know, business services whatever thing, yeah, and all everybody in the audience, there's there's ten thousand people there, and they're all our customers. Yeah, that's different. Oh than yeah, that's great. doing doing a series of of regional shows, Webinars which, or, yeah, yeah, whatever, which are great. They're fine. They're, they're thirty people in the audience. None of whom are my customers. Yeah, I'm doing that for the good of the the world order. I'm not getting exposed. Right. So, so that's yeah. part of that. That's part of giving back. And, yeah, and you service, and I are yeah. very big into that. So you know, hey, honestly, regional associations and please keep asking us because yes. we, we always <laughs> seek to say yes, whether we do it individually or or together. Um, and I think you're right. And, and you know, I made a little tongue in cheek jab at Taylor Swift a second ago. Escher, what what what? Taylor Swift and her team, in my opinion, did everything wrong at the Grammys. Usher and his team did everything right. It was sponsored by Apple Music, so his album was available on Apple Music before the Super Bowl. Yeah. And then where, where artists make all of their income, which is merchandise and touring, that's mm -hmm. really it. No one makes money on streaming anymore. I mean, there's no money yeah. in streaming, trust me. Um, and it, for, for that to drop right during the halftime performance 100 percent brilliant. brilliant and i thought and like i said i thought the show was good we are short on time kirby but we would remiss. we have to kind of settle up here oh okay. uh, we did have a bet for yeah. the don't Super remember Bowl. now so... <laughs> i didn't remember until a to about three minutes before we started recording <laughs> so um we both picked the kansas city chiefs uh who ended up winning the super bowl so we have to go to a tiebreaker before we do that uh, man, we'd be remiss if we didn't say what happened yesterday mm, as we're yeah. recording this Holy at cow. the uh, parade in, uh, in in Kansas City. Just, uh, just saw it this morning. Uh, yeah. Man, yeah, just awful, awful. And I know Dave Schultz, who we talked earlier, and Mandy Mandy Rudd were there. Uh, they're safe. I talked to him yesterday or texted with them. And but yeah, just just uh, just awful thing. But anyway, so just anyway, hearts are thoughts yeah. with them, and that's not going to do very much other than thoughts. It's just prayers. network. Yeah. We're anyway. Yep. Uh, okay. So we had to go to a tiebreaker and the tiebreaker was the first team to score. Now, I, if you recall last week, I was extraordinarily magnanimous you were. because I allowed you to pick first and you picked the Kansas city chiefs who didn't get their shit together until <laughs> almost the end of the second quarter. <laughs> so the 49ers, the 49ers did score first. That makes me I don't like to brag, but that <laughs> makes me, I believe, the ultimate champion of <laughs> the fairy tale football pick league that we create every year. I'm so, the first Kirby, loser. You yeah. must now donate. <laughs> you are the first loser. You must now donate $100 to uh, the Promotional Products Education Foundation. And because, again, and I hate to say this, I'm being so magnanimous, <laughs> I'm going to match your donation as well. Well, uh, I think what's most important, though, is that the, 
all three people who are learning, who are listening to us is yeah. we would just like encourage you to do the same. Because again, I think it is one of those we causes would. that we, we are, it's near and dear to our heart. So that's good. And it is near and dear to our heart for both on uh, PPEF trustees. And here's the thing, you can just do it very easily. PPEF.us. It's just that simple, kids. Click a button, donate some money, feel good about that. All right, Kirby, I think it's time to wrap this up, but we'd be remiss if we didn't thank our great friend, Miles Wadsworth, and all the good strongs over at Logo Mats. They've got some great new merchandise to go alongside. They're already amazing mat solutions. And you talk about vibrant color when it comes to uh, whether it's a desk mat, whether it's uh, a floor mat, whether it's an anti-fatigue mat. It is amazing. And you talk about making that first impression when people come into uh, a store or come into an event. They really do an amazing job. So head over to LogomatsLLC.com. You're not going to be sorry you did, Kirby. I appreciate you matching outfits today a little bit. And I always appreciate you uh, bringing it, bringing it strong. You are, you know what you are, Kirby? You're a good neighbor. <laughs> so stupid. That's right.